And Amen. one of the things I found uh, in, in exploring the past, which is the book, what it's about, it's the social history of autism. I stumbled into something I hadn't realized before, and that is symbolic thinking. Uh, what We don't think of speech as symbolic. We just say, oh, it's natural. We, it's just what we do. It's not natural. It's learned. And we forget that what it really is, is we turned our little animal noises, our barks and our meows, uh, into tiny little sounds that we call words. And we strung them together. And we talked. And when you look at our alphabet, we have 26 little symbols that stand for sounds. And with them, we can write what we think. This is very hard for a lot of autistic kids. They, they don't get it at all. And one of the signs of it is uh, how they play with toys. And one of the things you speak of Harvard, when I was there, I was fortunate. Eric Erickson was uh, there for a stretch and was the most popular undergraduate course that they had there. And he was talking about identity and the life cycle. He began with children. Uh, and he said, uh, the way children play with toys will be the way they play with thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, I began to pull that apart a bit. And I went to Dr. Catherine Lord, who uh, is a wonderful combination teacher and explorer. And she's found, what she discovered was when mothers brought their children to her and were anxious about their behavior, she sat with them on the floor and played with them with blocks. She would pick with the moms. Up. You're talking with, about with the moms. Uh, no, no uh, you're right. Excuse me. I, I skipped a beat. She would, the child, the okay. mom would come to her with her child. Then okay. she would say, let me, let me see your child alone. Ah. Thank you. Yes. I, <laughs> I got so excited about what I wanted to get to. <laughs> well, I don't want to interrupt you. I just wanted to clarify. Go right ahead. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what she would do is sit down on the floor and with the child and a whole lot of blocks on the floor. And she would pick up a block and swing it through the air. And she would say, zoom, I'm a plane. Now, a lot of children, particularly a boy, who would pick up a block and push it across the floor and say, brum, I'm a truck. They have both of them made the block stand for an object. And they've also added the sound that that object makes. That's symbolic thinking. And a lot of autistic kids have trouble with that. And Kathy Lord told me, she said, when I see them start to line up their blocks, I know they're autistic. They do not understand symbolic thinking. They do not play symbolically. And then we both talked about the fact that uh, children draw symbolically. They make a square, and then they put a triangle on top of it, and they say, that's my house. It's a symbolic drawing. Children who are autistic, who particularly those who have real art talent, will draw the scene. They do not symbolize it. That's fascinating, Stacia. And absolutely fascinating. I, I, I found once I began to understand that, which I hadn't really before, it gave me another way to look at the history of autism. How does this manifest itself in the past? And how is it showing up? Uh, how do we help our children once we understand that problem? Yes.
Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.